There are a lot of password cracking tools, and some of them are listed on the slide, and now we'll see some of them in detail. Hydra is a free and open source command line tool to crack valid login password pairs online. It's very fast and flexible, and new modules are easy to add. Hydra is embedded in Kali. But before using it, we'd better see some of its parameters. You can specify the username list, let's say the user directory, with uppercase L parameter. If you'd like to find the password of a valid user, you can specify a single user with lowercase l parameter instead. You can also specify the password list. Let's call it the password dictionary with uppercase p parameter. If you find a password, for example, while dumpster diving and don't know the user, you can specify a single password with lowercase p. If one valid username and password pair is enough for us, we can use the f parameter and that makes a tool exit when it finds a valid username password pair. Server is another required parameter of the tool, which stands for the target server. And finally, we have to specify the service that we want to attack. Some supported services are HTTP post form, HTTPS post form, HTTP get form, HTTPS get form, HTTP proxy, MSSQL, MySQL, Oracle Listener, SSH, Cisco, etc. Every protocol has its own unique options to set. We'll see the options for HTTP post form in the following demonstration. So now I'll go to Kali and run a web browser. Do you remember OWASP Broken Web Applications? Uh, abbreviated BWA server? Well, it's on my network with the IP number of 139. Write in the IP address in the address bar of the browser and hit enter. Now, here's the home page of the OWASP BWA. I'll scroll down a bit and click Damn Vulnerable Web Application Link. Now, we arrived at a login page that asks for the username and the password. Now, we don't know any credential and we'll try to find a valid username password pair by online password cracking attack. So open a terminal screen. Hydra is embedded in Kali, so you can start to use it simply by typing its name. If you type Hydra with no parameter, the help page appears. Here is the list of options and supported services. So let's start to build our attack. L is the first parameter. To keep the attack simple and fast, I suppose that we'll know a valid user which is going to probably be admin, so I'll use the lowercase l parameter. Now we specify the password dictionary with uppercase p. Well, there are some dictionaries in Kali. Let me find them and I'll use one. So I open a new terminal screen and search for the dictionaries using the find Linux command. So I'm looking for the files that start with pass and have .lst extension. Mm, I found a few, so let's look at the contents of one of them using the less Linux command. You can search a phrase with forward slash indicator within the less command. So I look for admin if the word exists in the dictionary. Well, because I know the password of the admin user is admin, and I want to show you a successful attack, okay, now this is the target server, OWASP BWA139. I have to specify the service we attack. So to learn the service, let's go to the browser again. But before trying to log in, I run Burp Suite. Now, I think I should tell you a little bit about Burp Suite. Uh, Burp Suite is used in web application penetration tests, and I've explained and used it extensively in hacking web applications and penetration testing. That's the course that fully lays it out in detail. 
but I'll just give you a little introduction to it now if you haven't done that course. Burp Suite is a web application penetration testing framework. It has become an industry standard suite of tools used by information security professionals to identify vulnerabilities and verify attack vectors for web-based applications. I suppose in its simplest form, Burp Suite can be classified as a personal proxy or interception proxy. A penetration tester configures their internet browser to route traffic through the proxy, which then acts as a sort of man in the middle by capturing and analyzing each request and response to and from the target web app. Individual HTTP requests can be paused, manipulated, and replayed back to the web server for targeted analysis of parameter-specific injection points. The injection points can be then specified for manual as well as automated fuzzing attacks to discover potentially unintended application behaviors, crashes, and error messages. You got all that? So now we can continue to the online cracking session with Hydra. Burp Suite is started. We have to route traffic through Burp Suite to be able to listen to the requests and responses and analyze them. So to do this, we should change the proxy settings of the browser to listen to the port 8080 of the local host. You can change the proxy of the browser from the preferences menu. I just use Foxy Proxy. It's a plugin to change the proxy of the browser easily. This little fox icon is Foxy Proxy. I'll click on it. And here there's uh, proxy settings for the port 8080 of the local host. Now, you can use the proxy from your browser's network setting, as seen in the picture here. So, I'll choose the proxy localhost 8080, and now my browser's traffic is routed through the Burp Suite. So, now I'll make a login attempt. So, Burp intercepted the login request. It's a post, so we find the service to attack. Back to the Hydra query, the next parameter is HTTP POST FORM. Now is the most critical part of building a Hydra attack, setting the options of the service. There are three parts of the options of the service, HTTP POST FORM, separated by the colon character. The first part is the address of the authentication form. The second part is the form parameters, and here they are. I'll copy them and paste them as the second part of the service options. Now, this is an important point again. The place that the passwords will be set for online cracking attacks are labeled as pass between two caret signs. Same as a password field. The place of the username is signed as user between two caret characters as well. The third part of the service option is a unique part from the response message of a failed login attempt. So I go to the browser, copy the login failed message, and paste that as a third part of the option. I think the service options are ready. So at last, I put a F parameter to make the tool exit when it finds a valid credential. So we're ready to run the command now. Just hit enter and online password cracking attack starts. Now we'll wait as much as it takes. It reports every minute. And this is the first minute's report. 933 tries per minute. That's pretty good. And it says it has 2,626 tries to do. Now here it found a valid username password pair just after the second minute's report. The username was already fixed, admin, and it found that the password is admin for the user. 
And since we use the F parameter, it stopped working as soon as it found a valid credential. Now we can go to the app and enter admin for the username and again admin for the password to log in.